Today we're going to be learning about different air masses and fronts that cause our weather. You'll start today with your foldable. Fold it in half hot dog style and cut up each of the vertical lines until you meet the crease. That should give you four nice flaps to work with. Make sure when you start that you have colored pencils. You'll need today a red pencil and a blue pencil okay. and also a purple pencil. Make sure that you pause often to make your drawings and your notes. Let's get started. My goal for the end of your class today is that you should be able to look at a weather map like this and understand what the different fronts are, which way they're moving, and what the high and low pressure systems mean. So let's get started. Air masses are huge bodies of air that have similar temperature, humidity, and air pressure at any given height. If you have a certain type of weather taking place outside, that's because there's a specific air mass that's influencing your weather. Scientists classify air masses according to temperature and humidity. In, the, in North America, we have four major air masses that influence our weather. Maritime tropical, continental tropical, maritime polar, and continental polar. You don't have any notes to take on this section, but please pay attention carefully so you understand where each mass is coming from and what type of weather it brings. Maritime versus continental helps us to decide where the air mass forms and whether it's going to bring warm weather or dry weather. Maritime forms over the ocean, and since the air evaporates over the oceans, this type of weather is going to be very humid. Continental forms over the land. A continental air mass is going to be much drier than a air, maritime air mass. We also have two air masses that decide on the temperature. Tropical air masses are warm air masses from the tropics that bring low pressure. Polar air masses are cold air masses that bring high pressure. If you look at this chart, you can see each of the air masses can be combined by either temperature or their humidity. So if you have maritime tropical, what type of weather would you expect? It's going to bring warm and humid weather. Maritime polar is going to be cool and humid. Polar will bring that cooler weather. Maritime, since it forms over the ocean, will be more humid. Continental tropical is going to be dry because it forms over land, but tropical indicates that it's going to be warm. Continental polar also forms over land, but indicates that it's going to be cool. If you take a look at this map, you can see where each of the following form. So here's something to think about before we continue. Does it take the same amount of time to fly from New York to Los Angeles as it does to fly from Los Angeles to New York? If you think no, you're absolutely correct. It takes about 5 hours and 45 minutes to fly from New York to Los Angeles. It takes about 5 hours and 16 minutes to fly from Los Angeles to New York. This is because you have a tailwind when you're flying east and when you're flying west, you have a headwind. Very similar to if you're riding your bicycle into the wind, it's more difficult to ride. And if you're riding your bicycle with the wind at your back, it's easier to ride and kind of pushes you along. Well, this wind that we're talking about today is called the jet stream. In the United States, most of our air masses push from the west to the east. And that's why we see the majority of our weather moving this way. For us here in Virginia, if we look out into the um, Midwestern states, you'll notice that they move across the country. In the continental In the continental United States, air masses generally push air, In the continental United States, our air masses usually move in the direction from west to east. 
They move in three ways. We have prevailing westerlies, which is a major wind belt in the United States that pushes that air from the east to the west. You may have heard of the jet stream. The jet stream is actually part of the prevailing westerlies, which moves from the west to the east. It's along this jet stream that most of our fronts meet. And fronts are just those boundaries where air masses meet. Well, our jet stream affects how air masses are. Jet streams are actually like a river of high-speed wind, very high in the troposphere. It has a huge influence on climate. It affects our weather patterns. It is about probably seven miles um, in altitude. Well, as jet streams blow from the west to the east, you can see that it carries the air masses along their track. We're going to move in and take a look at some of these fronts that it carries. Make sure that you pause often so that way you can get all of our pictures done and do them correctly. What is a front? Well, we define a front as the boundary where air masses meet. Usually, storms and other weather that changes develops a long front. As huge masses of air move across land and oceans, they collide with each other, but they don't mix very easily. It's kind of like oil and water. Let's take a look at four different types of fronts. Remember that cold air is very dense and tends to sink. Warm air is less dense and tends to rise. As you have that rapidly moving cold air and it runs into slow moving warm air, that dense cold air slides under the lighter warm air and pushes the warm air upward. This is what happens in a cold front. Cold fronts are generally described using a series of triangles. They're blue, blue symbolizes the cold, and the triangles are always uh, pointed in the direction that the front is moving. So if the front is moving to the southeast, that's the direction that the triangles will be pointed. Cold fronts usually indicate clouds, rain, snow, thunderstorms. But the good thing about a cold front is that the sky clears very quickly and new weather moves in. They don't hang around for a long time. The next type of front that we're going to talk about is when you have that warm air mass overtaking a slow moving cold air mass. Because the cold air is denser, the warm air moves over the cold air. It looks something like this. The cold air is represented in a triangle because it's just kind of a long, slow system. When we have our warm fronts, they're represented by half circles, colored red, red for the heat, and I always think the half circles makes it look like a sunshine is coming up over the horizon, which in my mind helps me remember that that's your warm front. When you have a warm front, if the air is really humid, it's going to bring rain and snow, long and continuous, might be several days. If the air is dry, it's just going to bring us scattered clouds. Now, these are going to bring and be followed by warm weather. By warm, I mean warm relatively to what type of weather you were having. So if it was 19 degrees and you were having snow, warm might possibly mean that the next few days are in the 20s. The next type of front that we're going to talk about are stationary fronts. This is when two fronts face each other in kind of like a standoff. Stationary fronts are where the warm and cold air masses meet, but neither can move the other. Think about a stationary bicycle. You can pedal and pedal and pedal, but you never get anywhere. A stationary front is shown by um, alternating red half circles and blue triangles. And you can see in this diagram where the cold air meets the warm air. In a stationary front, when the warm and cold air meet, the water vapor in the warm air condenses into rain or snow or fog or clouds. The thing about a stationary front is that if it remains stalled over an area, it could bring days of clouds and precipitation, sort of like what we've been having here. Um, a stationary front also is how sometimes areas out west get dumped on with six feet of snow. They meet, neither air mass can move the other, and that weather just continues. The last type of front is an occluded front. This is the most complex kind of situation.
This is where warm air actually gets caught between two cooler air masses. And you can see this in the picture. That denser cool air moves underneath the less dense warm air and they push the warm air upward. The two cooler air masses meet in the middle and this is where they mix. This is where the occluded part comes in. The temperature near the ground actually becomes cooler because the warm air mass is occluded or cut off from the ground. As the warm air cools and its water vapor condenses, this is what might bring some cloudy rain or snow to fall. After an occluded front passes, you'll have cool, clear weather. If you look at a weather map, you may notice that there are, you may see a capital H or a capital L somewhere on the weather map, and that would indicate high pressure systems and low pressure systems. High pressure systems and low pressure systems are a good indicator of what the temperature in that general area will be and what the weather will bring. High pressure systems, the air sinks down, and as it nears the ground, because the ground is warmer, those molecules spread out towards areas of low pressure. Usually these high pressure large systems um, are very large and they change slowly. High pressure systems are going to bring dry, clear weather. Areas of different pressure also cause changes in the weather and that's called a low pressure system. During a low pressure system, the air rises and it has lower pressure, air pressure than the air around it. As the air in the center rises, it starts to cool and this type of system brings clouds and rain and wind. 